When it comes to learning how to play racing games, the first issue that we've all ran into is the tracks. Where on earth do you go? Instead of focusing on breaking as late as possible or fighting for a position, you're wondering if the next corner is a left-handed hairpin or a quick right-hander. To save us from embarrassment, developers kindly put in a racing guideline to show you where to brake, turn, apply the throttle as you race around the track. But like most assists, eventually you will want to remove the guideline to prove that you are the best driver you can be. So here at Veloce, we are going to show you five easy tips to race on F1 2020 20 without the racing line. Before we get into the video, we have got an exciting opportunity for you to win your very own play seat. To enter, go to the link in the video description for more information. You have one week to enter, with the winner being announced in next week's episode of Esports 101. Good luck. Tip 1. Background. As always, let's start with the obvious question. What is a racing line and why should it matter to you? A racing line is often considered the fastest and most optimal way to drive around a circuit. It optimizes every corner so that each entry, apex and exit is taken at maximum speed possible. The closer you drive to this racing line across the lap, the quicker your lap time will become. It's often considered that the difference between a good and a great driver is not only how closely they can drive the optimal lines across the lap, but also across a whole race distance. On top of this, the racing line is the line of least resistance around the circuit, meaning you'll find your tyres lasting those extra few laps. Tip 2, corner types. So we know that driving to the racing line makes you go faster. So where should I be placing the car to optimize these lines? As a generic guideline for a typical 90 degree corner, you should approach the entry at the very outside of the racetrack. Turn in to clip the apex at the very inside of the track before planting the throttle and exiting the corner at the outside once again. This allows the car to carry maximum entry speed, maintain a high minimum speed at the apex, and then a maximum exit speed onto the next straight. However, as you know, not every corner is 90 degrees. There are corner types such as hairpins, S's, double apexes, and chicanes. And that's before you start to dive into on and off camber corners. Corners followed by long straights or corners followed quickly by one another. These differing corner types all vary in their difficulty and will require varying levels of practice. A corner such as Cops, which is a decreasing radius flat cambered corner, will need much less practice compared to the relentless corner after corner S's section in Suzuka. As long as you always aim to carry maximum entry and exit speeds and maintain the high minimum speed at the apex, then you should be on your way to improve your lap times. Tip 3. Track Furniture For most corners, you will find yourself hitting the brake pedal to slow yourself down. This shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. However, what does change is the amount you have to slow yourself down. No two braking zones are the same, so you need to be extra aware of where you should be braking. Tracks quite kindly give the driver's brake meter boards, which indicate how far away the apex is. These will be often found on the ground or attached to a barrier perpendicular to the circuit. Each braking zone will count down from 150 to 100, then to 50. Some corners, however, do not have any meter boards, leaving drivers to pick out different elements of the track as a reference point. This can be the start of a curb, a zebra crossing, or even a port -a -loo. But if there is one piece of advice that you must take away from this video is this. Never use shadows as break markers. Shadows can change session on session depending on the time of day, meaning you could either be breaking suddenly too early or too late for a corner. Tip four, smoothly does it. Once you've learned the basics, it's now time to start refining your driving style. Driving on F1 2020 is very rewarding to a smooth driver as you can settle into a consistent rhythm. A good way to build a smooth driving style is to lap on time trial. But rather than driving around trying to set the best possible lap times, back off a little bit and drive around for 10 to 15 laps. Each lap, try to set a similar lap time to the previous one. Tip five, muscle memory. Following on from the previous point, if you're wondering why you still aren't beating the top guys, here's a key reason, muscle memory. Muscle memory is very self-explanatory. It means your muscles remember what to do at any given moment. Every top F1 esports driver has this trait, which pretty much allows them to drive any circuit with their eyes shut. This skill is only built up through huge amounts of practice. 
However, when you start to build this muscle memory, not only will you be able to jump on a circuit and be on the pace straight away, but also across games as well. This is a huge benefit for drivers at F1 Esports level, as when they pick up a new game, they can instantly start working on setups and mastering their driving style versus learning where the track goes. A good way to build muscle memory is to make sure your driving position is consistent every time you go to drive. This is why we recommend racing seats from our video sponsor, Playseat, who provide comfortable and sturdy racing seats used in the official F1 Esports Pro Series. Click the link in the video description for more details. And that's it, those were our top five tips to help you remove the racing line on F1 2020. Is there anything else you would like help with? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to enter the play seat giveaway with the link in the video description. Other than that, I've been Hayden from Veloce and we will see you next time for another episode of Esports 101.